These um, were created at the same time that the, uh, the Shire um, offices were built. That's in uh, the, the uh, middle 60s. Marshall Clifton, the architect, asked me if I'd do them, which um, I was delighted to do because you know, I was a young artist in those days. I didn't have a studio in, the, uh, in those days. I just um, had uh, a sand patch out on the building site and, and put a, a little wooden mould around it. And, uh, so these weren't done in the studio, they were done in the backyard. In the old days, um, when I was still teaching at uh, Gilbert Grammar School and Perth College, Hale School, I used to work on the kitchen table in, 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 the, in the family house and clear everything away by the time the kids got home from school. And then invariably I'd cook the evening meal because my then wife was a journalist and she um, you know, worked a full day. So I, I was um, the chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> which I, I like, I was a reasonably good cook. But um, uh, this, um, to build this studio was quite a luxury, you know. You can imagine just the dining room table, about half the size of that, you know, was my easel and uh, where I worked. And uh, so I didn't realize that uh, I needed so much space. You see, this is cluttered. But I could, I could quite happily do with twice the amount of space. In those days, architects, um, you know, were becoming conscious of of getting some uh, artistic decoration into their building. So they, uh, the first thing they said to you, could you keep the cost down? Uh, a because We'd like to have it there, and if uh, if it's too expensive, they'll knock it back because they didn't really want it in the first place. But uh, they were almost beyond my limit of strength to you know push them up there because they were still wet, you know, wet plaster, and they probably weighed uh, about uh, twice as much as they do now with water content in them. We had a couple of near misses, you know. <laughs> and he started trembling and saying, well, I think I'm going to drop this. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't. The whole idea was to uh, recreate, like, uh, the bed of the sea, or in this case, the river, because Mosman is uh, very close to the river. To be really authentic, I should have had some old emu brewery um, brown beer bottles because uh, I'm quite sure that, uh, the, the river floor is littered with those. But uh, to be aesthetic, I, I uh, admitted that detail. It was a method that uh, <clears throat> I saw in a magazine somewhere where the Olivetta, Olivetti typewriter company had uh, commissioned a, a large mural and um, what they'd done, they'd, I don't know who, who the artist was, but they'd gone down to the beach and, you know, they didn't have this metallic sort of thing in it, but they were all footprints and handprints and that sort of thing. And then they put a mould around and cast the, uh, the actual beach with plaster, with the same as this, which picked up the little pebbles and shells and the sand from the beach and, uh, and put that as a mural in their office. I think it was in Italy. Some of these iron pieces I'm, I might have picked up in the desert somewhere around an old mine site or somewhere like that. Um, I've got a collection of shells and, and uh, the things that you might find on the on the sea floor or, or the river floor. 
So I'll, I'll stick those on in, you know, where there's a, a need for them. Um, if I half bury objects in it, I will have to uh, take to it with um, an angle grinder and a, and a hammer and chisel to half bury some uh, nice little antique bottles like that. And I'll plaster those in so that it looks like the, the, like they were original. Mm -hmm. That, by the way, is a, a very uh, old ink bottle found up on the gold fields in the days when people used to write with pen and ink to the folks back home. And I'm really looking forward to um, reworking them. Curators and, and things in galleries don't like you doing that because you come up with new ideas and get away from the original, but I don't think it matters in this case. I'm dating them uh, 08, so... Mm. Because I wasn't quite sure of the actual date that I, I did the originals. Mm. But it would have been in the, in the 60s when Marshall Clifton had completed the building. Mm. While the, um, the building was undergoing renovations, um, they were taken down from their um, original place, which was about eight feet from the floor, like a frieze around them, and um, stacked up against the wall. And the, the builders that were uh, uh, renovating the thing just imagined they were to be chucked out. So they all ended up in a, in a skip bin. And um, somebody recognized them and said, no, they're not, not to be thrown away. So they are pulled out, but um, handled in a very careless way, I imagine, and they got damaged. And I'm surprised um, that uh, they weren't uh, more severely damaged because, you know, being thrown into a, a, a rubbish skip in a fairly sort of offhand, careless way could have damaged them a whole lot more, you know, broken in, in two or something. Fortunately, they weren't. So they're fairly intact, except for a few details missing from them. Like, I think there were a few, few more of these fish images. They don't represent um, any particular species. They're, they're totally made up. Uh, I had my name stamped into little copper pieces to put on there, so there won't be any mistake in the future when um, people are enthusiastically um, refurbishing the, the building so they don't get chucked out in a rubbish bin. <laughs> yeah. I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't insulted about that because um, as an artist you get used to um, people uh, criticising your work, you know, sort of dismissing it as, a, you know, something my five-year-old kid could do, would I? <laughs> anyway, I'm, um, I'm glad that they were rescued and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to, uh, to work on them again.